Danil, I'm sorry. This is from Andres Ruzinov of DB4 Tennis. I'm sorry that your huge effort did not succeed, but it was a great run again. It seemed that you just let the first set go after that incident. In retrospect, what would you do differently and what was what not in this semifinal? Uh, yeah, talking about first set, uh, he was actually playing good also, Dominic. So uh, I lost my concentration, started doing some errors. So yeah, <laughs> was, uh, was a bit far uh, uh, from winning this first set. What I would do different in this semifinal uh, probably not much. I mean, we can talk about some shots or uh, the lose of the concentration in the first set, but uh, Dominic played really good. So tennis is all about small points. Uh, sometimes you win these points, sometimes you lose them. And today I lost uh, the, the most important points and uh, that's how he got the win. But uh, I think it was a really high level tennis and Dominic was playing really good. Okay, thank you. Let's go to the video board. Let's go to Peter from ESPN.com. Peter, you are live. Yes, uh, Daniel, um, everyone thought, people thought for some time that you two would stand back and, and trade shots forever, but you, you both mixed it up a lot. Um, he hit a lot of slices. You came in, you hit a lot of drop shots. How much of that was part of the plan, and how much was it adjusting to the situation? Yeah, there was a lot of adjusting to the situation because, as I say, you know, sometimes Dominic can have a day where he's going to miss a lot of shots when he's going to go for it today. I don't think it was it was the case. So I knew I had to be more aggressive. Also, the conditions were really, really slow uh, because it was cold today. So uh, just uh, by uh, standing back and uh, hitting the ball on the other side, I would not succeed. So I had to mix it up. I think I did a really good job uh, out there and just uh, was... Uh, was playing probably a little bit worse today, and that's why I lost in three sets, actually. Okay. Let's go to Bill from Inside Tennis. Bill, you are live. Hi, hi, Daniel. Hi. Uh, could you just take a minute and just talk about, hi, talk about his groundies uh, off of both sides? Um, are they among the best? Can you compare them to the best groundies in the game, uh, if you would? Yeah, today he played like a real champion. Uh, as I say, you know, uh, that's uh, actually the strength of big three, no matter which day you play them. Uh, they, it seems like they play the same level. Uh, talking about myself or Dominic, we can have these bad days where we can, you know, maybe maybe you can say, okay, I'm going to play to the backhand of Dominic and get some chances. Uh, well, <laughs> not, not uh, during this US Open or uh, Australian Open. He's playing really some great tennis. Uh, back and forehand slice, everything is there. So as I said, I try to mix it up. I feel like I've done a lot of great uh, things tonight, but uh, just uh, didn't didn't get it till the end. Let's go to Joel from Tennis.com. Joel, you are live. Oh yes, uh, Dominic. I want to ask you, what is that? Uh, no, Dominic, I'm sorry, Daniel. What did he do so well in the tiebreak that helped him win those? Oof, uh, I mean, again, it, it all comes to, you know, some shots. Like, uh, I think uh, I had a set point and he served to my backhand. And I was actually thinking uh, where he's going to serve. So it all comes to the small moments. But I uh, think it's more, in general, he had uh, a little bit of more, uh, I don't know how to call it, uh, had something, uh, he had a little bit more energy tonight maybe. Let's call it a winning energy, and uh, I think it was feeling uh, throughout uh, all the match, and that's why I was serving two times for the set. And I didn't do anything wrong, but he was playing really good. He fought for it till the end. I also fought for it till the end, and oof, we can discuss for hours about this. Maybe I should have played cross down the line, but uh, tennis uh, is not only about this, and he was really good tonight. Let's go to Chris from usopen.org. Chris, you are live. Chris, you are live. Hey, con congrats on making the semis, Daniel, tough one tonight. Um, I can hear you, yeah. So what's next for you? Um, are you heading right off to Europe to um, get ready for the clay? And how do you feel about that quick turnaround Paris French Open starting in less than two weeks? Uh, yeah, I'm going back tomorrow, uh, going back to Monaco, practice for uh, maybe, I don't know, three days uh, because I'm going to take uh, for sure like two days off. 
and then uh, go to Hamburg to try to play one tournament before French, try to prepare it. Uh, looking forward to it. I was uh, actually, uh, let's call it like this, uh, last clay season, uh, my best tournaments were the first ones. So here I'm going to have only two. Uh, hopefully I can have uh, some great results. Okay. Let's go to Craig from Cross Court. Craig, you are live. Daniel, that match could have actually been two sets to one in your favor. Um, will the, the fact that you weren't able to close out the second and third sets, will that sit with you for a little while? Or the fact is it's over with and now it's a matter of looking ahead? Not at all. It's not going to sit with me and not because uh, I'm always disappointed to lose. But uh, it's not like I, I felt that I got nervous or... Uh, I lost my concentration. I was I was there uh, during. Okay, let's not talk about first set, but second, third set. I was there all the time. I, I felt like mentally I was uh, I was hundred percent. My concentration was there. My my uh, game plan was there. Just uh, he managed to to be on top of me. And yeah, maybe I had a set point, especially in the in the in the third set. Maybe I could have served better and make an ace. But uh, this is as I say again. This is tennis. So. Looking ahead and uh, was a great match tonight. Okay, let's go to Richard from usopen.org. Richard, you are live. I know you've been asked a lot about uh, playing in the stadium without fans, but last year the crowd really was a big part of your performance here. And I wondered if you could just reflect on the two weeks of playing without that kind of energy in the stadium. Yeah, of course. Uh, I think everybody says it. It's sad to play without the crowd. Uh, we we love playing for the fans. We love playing with the fans. Uh, <laughs> as we can see last year, even sometimes when they're against you, you can interact with them, which is uh, good. Uh, but uh, we we really look forward to having fans back. Uh, but of course, it's need, it needs to be uh, in best uh, best ways possible. So maybe... Uh, Starting, I don't know, 20%, 30%. And then, I don't know, it's uh, not a question to me. It's more for the authorities, health department, stuff like this. So uh, really hoping that uh, funds are going to come back uh, soon. Let's go to Chuck from the Washington Post. Chuck, you are live. Okay, we're having a little technical difficulty with <laughs> Chuck. Okay. Let's go to Vani from Uber Tennis. Vani, you are live. Yes, hi. Um, after the incident in the first set, you went to talk to your supervisor, to the, to the supervisor. I just wanted to ask, what did you expect him to do in that kind of situation? Or what were you trying to get out of the out of your chat with the supervisor? Yeah, I was I was just really angry. So of course there was uh, no reason to to talk to him, but. Uh, what surprises me sometimes in tennis is, okay, the supervisor is always there. And in case, uh, let's, let's say, for example, a default, he steps up, he calls a default. It's not the decision of an umpire. But like, for example, talking about my code violation today, I mean, what did I do? Did I uh, hurt someone? Did I uh, say something rude? I didn't do anything. And I get a code and I'm like, supervisor, do something or why are you sitting here? And I still don't know the answer to this question, but of course uh, there was no reason to get angry on this. Let's go to Andrew from the ATP Tour. Andrew, you are live. Hey, Daniil. Um, leaving New York, are you going to look back at this as happy that you made the semifinals of the U.S. Open or disappointed that you were two matches away from potentially winning your first slam? Uh, of course, it's a little bit of both, but definitely more happy than disappointed because uh, uh, I can tell you honestly, if uh, two months ago or two weeks ago, okay, two weeks ago I was here, uh, two months ago or a month ago, somebody would tell me that I would uh, I would make semis of US Open, I would be super happy because I was not feeling great about my game, great about my physical shape. Like uh, I had, I want to say, huge troubles in practice. Uh, I was like, okay, how am I going to play? Finally, I showed some great level, even talking about tonight, super happy about my level, disappointed with the loss. Uh, but uh, great experience, great result, and uh, looking forward to next tournaments. 